Marcus is confident his two nines with a king kicker are good right now. 300,000. Well, he has analyzed that nicely. He is going to bet 300,000 this time. That is one stiff bet into the Frenchman. Got a tough decision here. This is part of the problem. When you're checking and calling, you're always at a guess as to whether your opponent's got it or not. You're far better off to lead out and bet to gain information sometimes. Well, he has gotten stubborn. He has called this. And he has made the call. I put you on 10, Jack. We are going to the river. Here it is. It's a 10 of diamonds. Helps neither player. Well, neither player liking to see that card. They know if either guy was drawn out of straight, they either made the straight or they made two 10s, which beats their 9s. Ludovic not messing around. Checking again. Now Marcus taking his time here. Well, you want to get a value bet in here, but the only way a value bet works is A, if you think you got the best hand, and B, if you think your opponent is going to pay you off. That 10, a very scary card. Recognize there's over a million dollars in the pot. Check. And Marcus going to be happy just to take the million. He's checking it down. He's going to win this pot. And you can go back to that old poker proverb. It pays to have a kicker. Marcus's kicker wins this pot for him. It's over a million dollars. So now Marcus Lehman, the amateur player, well out in front. And Ludovic, look at him. He's kind of talking to himself. He's saying, hey, I knocked out the best players in the world here. I'm up against this amateur. This should be a little easier than that. And with that last hand, the blinds are going up. Blinds will be 25 and 50,000 now. We're going to start to gamble in the castle. Well, what a turnaround we've seen here since we've been playing three-handed. Ludovic Luque was well in charge of this final table, but we've seen a tornado in Marcus Lehman. He has won a number of pots in a row by being aggressive. Well, not this time because Ludovic with ace-jack has raised it to 125. Well, you can't blame him for raising here. This is a big hand and heads-up play. Now Marcus with a 9-6. Looks like he oh. wants to compete here. He's on a roll. Feels like he might be priced in here. Cost him 75000 more to call. Why not play this? Well, the funny thing is one guy's 22, one's 46. And the 46-year-old looks fresher of the two. The body language, he looks like he can go all night. Whereas the Frenchman is sort of sort of deteriorating before our very eyes. Well, he had a huge chip at this final table a short while ago. Now he's up against it. Well, here comes a flop. King, queen, queen with two hearts. No help to either player. Does give Ludovic a straight draw. Action on Marcus here. Now remember, he's just got a 9-6 offsuit. Has absolutely nothing. Now he's taking his time. Is he thinking about a possible steal here? His opponent raised before the flop. 150. Oh, wow. Well, this Marcus is just fearless. He must think he's a matador here in Spain or something. He is trying to control this bullfight, no doubt about it. He's betting 150,000. But Ludovic, well, he has called this. Now, it's to me, if you're Ludovic here, I don't think you can put your opponent on a king or a queen in this situation. And a six on the turn, that's going to pair Marcus. Well, Marcus now has the best hand. He has queens and sixes. Again, he got lucky, caught a card here, and now has the best hand. Well, he's staring over at Ludovic, staring back. 300. Well, Marcus is going to bet 300,000 with the two sixes. He thinks Ludovic's got some type of straight draw, perhaps a flush draw. Not going to give him a free card here. Betting 300,000, putting the hammer down. And now it swings back on Ludovic, and he would just love to come over the top. But the problem is, he doesn't have bluffing chips to do it. He'd be called down. Things have turned.